our voices are almost as unique as fingerprints. Accent, tone, speed, pitch, inflection, intonation are all binding human characteristics. But what magical mix of those attributes captures our attention? Harnesses trust and exudes confidence? Once you've found that perfect blend, can it be simulated and turned into an AI voice so lifelike that you couldn't tell it apart from the real one? In this project, we are actually looking for the ideal voice for customer service. And to that end, we engage linguistics experts to go out and help us source this voice to create a synthetic version of that that we can use inside our contact center. Now, the more lifelike that it can sound, uh, at least in our experience, the better the reception of the, the customers that are going to be talking to it. If you think of the ideal voice, we can relate it to cooking. If you're making, for example, shepherd's pie, then what is the bedrock where well, you need minced beef? I think we're going to hear the accent first, how you pronounce your vowels and consonants. Then we get the more meso level, potatoes, clearly, but then what kind of potatoes? That's the same with the voice, tone, speed, pitch, intonation, and so on and so forth. And then at the end, you know, how much salt, how much pepper, or maybe neither. That's like the finishing touch, the way they suddenly put an emphasis on certain words and then back off or have a pause and then come back in again. Categorizing voice is something that we can look at in a measurable way, pace, tone, are there enough pauses to allow the listener to, to you know, really embed what's just been said to them, um, intonation, rhythm. Factors like that will all aim towards what we would like to think is the ideal voice. Technology is really changing the way that the contact centre industry works today. Uh, as it relates to artificial intelligence, machine learning and those sorts of things, what we're starting to see is a lot of automation of conversations that would typically or usually be handled by human agents, now being handled purely uh, by software. Start with the selection. The ability to communicate yourself clearly is one of the most valuable skills you can have. It sounded like the kind of voice I would hear in like a public service message, very serious. The voice we are looking for will be trained by an AI to be an intelligent virtual agent, or IVA as they're called. Imagine Siri or Alexa helping you out when you call your bank or online clothing store with an issue. Having a clear, calm and trustworthy voice at the other end is key. A great sounding voice should engage the listener and leave a lasting impression. A little bit too conversational. A great sounding voice should engage the listener and leave a lasting impression. Love it. Yeah, that's the best the so far. The pace was absolutely spot on. The next one, Simon? Sometimes it's how you say something as much as what you're saying. Wow. <laughs> the others, I was simply listening and, and listening for words, the inflection, the tone, um, enunciation, all of those things. This, I didn't care. We don't think language. We feel it. We sense yeah. it. I think that was it for me. Yeah. We feel his voice captures all the qualities that you want. It's easy to listen to because he speaks very clearly. It is calming, it is pleasing, it is soothing, it is gentle. And it, and it comes across as very natural. Pleasure to introduce you. I believe your voice is partly in your genes, but the majority of it is your upbringing. The experiences you had coming up as a child, your environment, the people that you were around, because you know, you're a product of your environment. Yeah, we've got eight scripts. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> a couple of places it will appear to you that you're having a conversation with yourself. So nice, natural pace, rhythm, intonation, tone, but just not in the classic voiceover sense. Right, sounds easy enough. Okay. The reason why we feel that this is the future and where things are going is because if interfaces could all be spoken, we would use them. And we've seen this with the advent of smart speakers and just the extraordinary uptake of that sort of technology. Things tend to gravitate towards conversational style interfaces if given the chance and the technology allows it. If you hire me, I'll become one of your most valued employees. I can help you reduce service costs because I only charge about 10% of a live agent. I can help you extend your service hours because I work 24 seven and never take a break. Just stop there for a moment. Do you think we have a little bit more sparkle in that? You know, you're actually getting to talk about yourself here. So I wake up every day at eight o'clock. First, I make coffee right away. I can also give your customers a more conversational service experience. Talking to me is a lot like speaking to Siri or Alexa. How are your vocal cords holding up? There was no way to squelch the intrepidly truthful right brain I can understand and respond using lifelike text-to-speech in hundreds of languages. 
I also use natural language understanding to learn how to answer your questions. I'm happy. I'm sure we're gonna get something pretty wonderful out of this. We're doing something really, really exactly. cool. Why would someone want to talk to an IBA over talking to a person? Well, the, the simple answer is, in many cases, the person is not available. The reason you're on hold for half an hour is you're waiting for a person to free up so you can talk to them. If the, if the question was, um, would you like to wait 30 minutes or would you like to try an automated service while you're waiting? Almost everyone will take the automated service approach. And once you've had good experiences using these types of technologies, your reluctance to use them fades away. They're going to take a human voice and put it into, actually make it into a, an AI conversation. Then I think a lot of people, speaking for myself, definitely, oh, well, it'll have all the answers. <laughs> WellSet Labs creates lifelike synthetic voices from the voices of real people and then turn essentially that audio into code um, from which a, an engineer um, and or a product developer and or a content creator can then go forward and create content products and experiences with the synthetic voice in a way that has never been imagined. What's a task? Tasks are things that IVAs like me can do. For so that's an example of Vaughn speaking himself. And when I'm listening to that data, I'm, I'm ensuring that we are capturing the likeness of that voice actor and we're not manipulating something beyond what they have provided. So once we've captured genuine and authentic data, uh, the next step is training. Um, so we at WellSet Labs, we have a proprietary uh, deep learning model, um, which we're feeding this data into the model. And then the model is progressively learning. The process of synthesizing a voice is really synthesizing the sounds that are in the audio files and in the data. We are capturing all of the combination of frequencies and vibrations that are, are inherent to a voice that as a human we would recognize is a voice. But the machine just is guessing sounds and eventually those sounds and those patterns turn into something that again we recognize as a human voice. I'm getting the actor's breaths, I'm getting the actor's pausing, I'm understanding how frequently those things are occurring, and the model is, is ingesting all of that. Um, all of those sounds are, are key to capturing that naturalness. We could aim for perfection, but human voice is not perfect, so we aim for human naturalness instead. This is what my voice sounds like at the beginning of spectrogram training. My voice is transforming from spectrogram predictions into signal predictions. But as the training progresses, the predictions more closely align with ground truth. Until finally, I'm now ready for my first customer experience. I'm a 5'9 virtual agent. If you hire me, I'll become one of your most valued employees. In a few words, tell me how I can help you today. Can you tell if I'm happy or angry today? I can detect joy, fear, sadness, anger, analytical, confidence, and tentative tones. For example, I can tell you are feeling happy today. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. It was great talking to myself. <laughs> I didn't think anything sounded different. <laughs> it sounded just like me. It was really cool. Um, I think it sounds very naturalistic. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this technology goes because I've, that was far greater than I was expecting it to be, that's for sure. And to hear my own voice, that was, that was really cool.